thank you very much. So uh, the story starts with a projective variety in Pn defined over Q. And the most basic question we can ask is what can we say about V of Q? So is it empty, finite, infinite? And if it's infinite, what more can we say? Then, uh, so I want to count rational points. So in particular, I need infinitely many rational points. So it's a natural <laughs> assumption to make to ask that they are Darisky dense in V. So from now on, we assume that V of Q is Darisky dense in V. So this means that they're not included in the finite union of the varieties. And so we now have infinitely many of them. So we need a way to measure, say, the complexity of rational points. So I'm going to define the naive height of some x in Pn of q, given by x0, xn. So we can take a representative such that x0, xn are integers, and we can always ask that their GCD is equal to 1. OK, and with uh, such choice, so there are two choices possible, then we can define h of x as the maximum of the absolute values of the xi. OK, so now we've got a way to to measure uh, the complexity of rational points. So we can look at the set of rational points of bounded height on V. So I define NVH of B as the number of X in V of Q such that the, hei the height of X is less than B. OK, and yep, that's it. And so. There's a program uh, which has been initiated by Manin at the end of the 80s to understand what happens for this quantity when b tends to infinity and when v is finite. So Manin's program uh, so for v finite. So finite is is just the most natural assumption we can make in order to expect that we're going to have many rational points. For v fano, the goal is to understand the asymptotic behavior of this quantity. And v h of b is b tends to infinity. OK, so there's a general conjecture which we call Manning's conjecture, uh, which I'm only going to state in the most simple case of some hypersurface in Pn. So say V, hypersurface of degree D in Pn. Then in this situation, so V is Fano if N is greater or equal to D, then the conjecture is as follows. There should exist some open subset U in V, and there should exist some constant C positive such that the number of rational points on U of height whose height is bounded by B is the constant times B to the n minus D plus 1 times some power of log of B times 1 plus little of 1. So the power here is rho minus 1, where rho is expected to be equal to the rank of the pk of v. OK? Yes. So yeah, why do we need that? Because, uh, so I'm going to give an example in 30 seconds. Uh, in, on, on some varieties, there can be sub-varieties where there are way too many rational points. 
So we need to remove them in order to, to show the, the interesting part here. Okay. So what do we know? Uh, there are at least two angles of attack. So the first one is when n is very big in terms of d, exponentially big, then the, the hardy little method or circle method gives results. And the other one is when we have some group structure for v, if it's a toric variety, for example, or an equivalent compactification of some other algebraic group, we have also some other partial results. But if we are not in one of these two particular cases, then we don't know much. So it's natural to, to wonder uh, what happens for the low dimensional case. So in dimension one, we know everything we want to know. So in dimension two, the final varieties of dimension two are the alpedo surfaces. And the most famous of them, at least historically, are cubic surfaces. P3. Okay, so, um, so here everybody knows that cubic surfaces contain lines, and on each rational line, V uh, defined rational, defined over Q. Then if we look at the number of uh, rational points of bounded height on each line, and P1H of B, then in one minute, we see that it's asymptotic to b squared times constant C prime times one plus zero of one. But here, n minus d plus one is equal to three minus three plus one, so it's one. So on each line, there are way too many rational points, so we remove them. So that's why here we needed some open subset u. So set u equals v minus with the lines removed. Okay, good. So what do we know? Um, so first, for smooth cubic surfaces, the best result is due to his brown. And he proved that NUH of B is less and less. That just means B go of K, uh, less and less than B to the fourth self plus epsilon for all epsilon positive fixed. If, um, if, if there are three rational lines uh, on the surface uh, which are on the same plane, coplanar. Okay, so we wanted one as exponent of b and we get four thirds plus epsilon. So we are quite far from what we expect, what we wish. So next question is, what about singular cubic surfaces? The geometry of singular cubic surfaces is easier to understand than the geometry of non-singular cubic surfaces. So we can expect that the arithmetic is also simpler and it happens. Uh, what about singular ones? Okay, so there's a classification of singular cubic surfaces. So it goes back to Cayley and Schlafly. So there are 20 types given by, uh, so they can only have dual singularities. Uh, if you don't know what they are, just Think of them as symbols describing the singularities. So the most singular is a six, twelve. The less singular is a one. Okay, so that's just notation. And um, so the, the the question in which I'm interested is: Can we pick some nice surface in each type and try to prove Manning's conjecture for it? So. Um, for smooth cubic surfaces, which are up there, we can't. So for these, we still can't also. But for these down, some people, many people have been working on these examples. So at least between 17 and 20 here. So I should cite 
Heath Brown, Morose, Fouvry, uh, Salberger, De La Bretèche, Browning, Derental. So many people. And the question is, can we go higher in the table and try to go as close as possible to the smooth ones? So that's the difficulty goes this way. So I'm just going to give you an. Sorry? This is an upper bound that we've been discussing many weeks ago. Are there also any upper bounds? Yep, but uh, I, I don't even know if there are upper bounds for. I'm just asking. Are we only discussing. No, here, here, or down. In the running objectives in that regard. Yep. So, so uh, here. Here, yeah, but people have proved Manion's conjecture for at least one example in each type here. Yeah, yeah, the right, yeah, yeah, the right this. Yeah. So, okay, so I'm going to give you an example. So, one of the results of my thesis was to prove Manion's conjecture for some cubic surface with a D4 singularity. So, that's the new record. And then, the question is can we go, can we carry on to go higher? So, I'm going to state a theorem. So, if B is defined as the zero locus of this polynomial, x1 plus x2 plus x3 squared minus x1, x2, x3. Zero, then theorem. Manion's conjecture holds for D. Okay, so in three minutes, uh, I'm going to tell you the main steps of the proof. So, first one is to find a good parameterization of the rational points and V. For this, uh, we use universal torsos. So just think of them as a very good parameterization of the rational points on V. So there is an algorithm to, to compute universal torsos when they exist. <coughs> OK, and just for fun, I can give you the equation of the universal torso for this surface, so it's in, so it's affine in A10. We've got 10 variables, eta 1 to eta 10, and the equation is this, eta 2, eta 5 squared. So if you've never seen this kind of stuff, it's going to look crazy, but well, I said it ju just for fun. Eta 3, 6 squared, eta 9, eta 4, eta 7 squared, eta 10 equals eta 1, eta 2, eta 3, eta 4, eta 5, eta 6, eta 7. Yeah, that's it. And the second step, which I'm going to hide completely today, is to count integral points on T using analytic number theory techniques. And it's way easier to count on T rather than trying to count on V. OK, so I'm, I am sparing you 30 pages of calculation here. That's, that's the end of the proof. So further questions? Can we, can we try to go higher and higher? So Any meaning to the constant in the proof? Yes. So yeah, so there's the there's the conjectural interpretation of the constant here by Emmanuel Per, and so it's always the right one for cubic surfaces. It always works. Yeah. So can we can we go higher in the table? Well, a huge problem is that when we go higher than this one, then the universal torsos get completely crazy. So here, 
we just we simply have some hypersurface, so it's quite easy to count. But for instance, I'm going to give you two more instances just to show you how it, how things become after. So here we've got number seven with four A1 singularities. So that's maybe the most famous singular cubic surface, KD, KD surface, which is given by this equation. So for this one, the universal torsor It has 10 equations, so it becomes complicated to count solutions of 10 equations and 13 variables, I think. And last example for smooth cubic surfaces, we have 81 equations for 27 variables. So here it's just completely hopeless. So, mm, so yeah, it's an interesting question to to find new parameterizations or completely new ideas to to try to prove any conjecture for so the, these kind of surfaces or maybe for smooth smooth surfaces one day. But yeah, that's it. Thank you.